Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on environmental geography. So in this session, we are going to learn about a very interesting topic called environmental education. We are going to look at the environmental education, its various aspects, its need, its approaches and also the applications in India as well as world. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about environmental education. Now when we say environmental education, what does it basically mean? It is concerned with those important aspects of human behavior which are more or less directly or indirectly linked with the biophysical environment and also human beings ability to understand this interrelation. So if we don't understand the interaction or interrelation between human beings and the external environment or the biophysical environment, then we cannot give due importance that is needed for the environmental protection that we have learned already, right? So as many remedial measures that we have talked related to environmental hazards, environmental protection, environmental conservation, all these things are possible only if we understand this important linkage between human beings, their activities and the environment. So to understand this in detail, what is needed? Education is needed, right? So that is the whole idea behind environmental education. And if you look at this UNESCO definition, it says environmental education is a way of implementing the goals of environmental protection. It is not a separate branch of science. Remember that. Many people think environmental education is a separate branch of science or separate branch of education. No, it is integral part of environmental protection, environmental conservation. And remember, it is a lifelong learning process. And as well as it is not just fixed to one discipline. It is interdisciplinary in nature because environment is not just about any particular subject. It encompasses the concepts from various subjects. Right. So what we need to understand according to this UNESCO definition is two, three major keywords. One is your environmental protection. Then it is not a separate branch of science. And also it is interdisciplinary field of study. So remember these three important words here. Then if we look into the purpose, right, why do we need to do it? These are the various purposes listed here, if you can read it, to make aware of the relationship between humans and environment, that's the first purpose, to make aware of biotic and abiotic resources of environment, right, then usability of the resources, so that's very much important that how we are going to use the resource, in what ways, is it judicious use or is it conservative use, right, or is it exploitative usage, so it's very much important again, then sustainable use of environment that we have already discussed in the sustainable development lecture as well, and conservation and protection of environment along with creation of a positive attitude about environment. If we don't have this positive attitude towards environment, it's very difficult to protect environment against all the human activities that are going on, that is developmental activities. So this gratitude towards environment, environmental stewardship that we say is the key here. That's major part of environmental education. So to instill this environmental stewardship in the students, among the students, among the learners, and also to have this gratitude with positive mental aspect is the crux of environmental education or the main purpose of environmental education, right? Now let's elaborate further more. So if you go into the history or timeline of development of environmental education as a concept and also as a subject in the university system or education system, the history of EVS starts with 1950. If you see, this became a compulsory paper. I'm saying just a mandatory paper. It's not that environmental education was absent before that. But formally, it was introduced as a major compulsory paper, mandatory paper in 1950, New York State University. And we see 1970s as the cultural turn, as the environmental turn, the phase of environmentalism. Right, limits to growth and Stockholm Conference and several others. So IUC and International Union for Conservation of Nature formalized environmental education in 1970s. And then in 1977, remember Tbilisi Declaration, which is basically environmental education with a major objective about awareness, knowledge, attitude, skill and participation. Now remember these keywords. Awareness is one, knowledge is second, attitude is third, skill is fourth and participation is fifth. So environmental education was declared as one important subject in which these five things are the key. 
So we need to have these things towards conservation and promotion of environment. That was in 1977. Then in 1991, the Supreme Court of India, if we talk about Indian context, made this directive very clear to the government to make compulsory environmental education at all levels of education. So what happened since 1991 after this Supreme Court direction, what happened? The government incorporated environment in the schools gradually. So it took another 10, 12 years and in 2004 and 5, it was made compulsory in school syllabus as EVS and finally at college level in 2014, it became compulsory. So it was a long way, about 20 to 30 years it took us to actually realize the importance of environmental education, not for just one subject called geography but for all the students, all the people who want to learn, right? So education of environment is an interdisciplinary, right? So that's important here. Then let's understand UNESCO's aim of environmental education. What does it say? What is its aim? The aim of environmental education is clearly to show economic, social, political and ecological interdependence of the modern world. So this interdependence is the key. So economic, social, political and ecological, they are the four pillars which are interdependent. And remember, unless environmental education is there with people, they will not understand this delicate linkage between these facets, right? So at the grassroots level, what is happening? The aim is to succeed in making individuals as well as communities understand the complex nature of the built environment. For example, the role of urbanization. What is happening? The waste disposal problems, right? pollution. So unless we are environmentally educated, we will not be looking into all these phenomena that is happening around us in a better way, right? So that's the major aim. Then further to acquire what? Knowledge, values, attitudes and practical skills. For what? In order to participate in a responsible manner, not just Participate, but participate responsibly is the key here and in an effective way in anticipating and solving the social problems and management of quality of environment. So these are the major aims that you see of environmental education according to UNESCO. Further, if you look into the objectives, now objective is five major keywords, awareness, knowledge, attitude, skills and capacity building and participation. So five objectives of environmental education is Awareness, knowledge, attitude, skill and capacity building, participation. That's important here. Now, let's go to the guiding principles of environmental education. So, environmental education is guided by what kind of principles? Now, remember the first principle is about resource. So, resource principle means the judicious usage of resources, sustainable usage of resources. Then comes soil principles. So, in terms of soil, the conservation of soil, the preservation of the soil quality, right? All those important things, the removal of soil loss and soil degradation, shelter built plantations and so many other things related to soil, right? So soil is one important aspect that gives us all the plants, all our food comes from here, right? Then comes the wildlife protection principle. Remember, wildlife protection principle is as important as the flora protection, right? So we have already talked about wildlife protection in biogeography as well and other lectures as well. So this is another principle. Then comes environmental management principle. We have already discussed in details in the environmental management lecture as well that what are the key aspects of management. So that's their major principle. And there are some other principles which is the fifth one. So we have relations between humans and their environment are mediated by their culture. So that's one important point to remember that cultural aspect, historical aspect, architectural heritage aspect, these are the much in need of protection, right? So that's where these important principles are underlying all this environmental education, right? Now, if you look into the methods of providing education, it has been largely divided into two segments. One is the formal approach and other is the informal approach. So what is the difference here then? So formal approach basically is talking about the education that is available at the primary, secondary schools, UG, PG, PhD levels, research levels, right? So this is a formal education in which you cross one class and you go to the other class and you achieve a degree, right? So that's when you are doing a formal education. So this is where you go from school days to college to postgraduate to research. 
right? So that's a formal education in which environmental education is compulsory or it should be compulsory wherever it is still pending. And the second part is your informal part. Informal part is majorly focused towards awareness creation. For people who don't have formal education, even they can be environmentally educated, right? So remember, environmental education has both the segment. Formal and informal. Informal happens through TV, radio, newspapers, conferences, signboards, several messages on the walls that people write regarding environment, regarding plantation of trees. In the backside of the buses and even auto rickshaws, you can see many times written slogans. So what are those? Those are also part of environmental education, but they're informal messages, right? Through which people get aware. Right. So this is important here to understand this formal and informal education. Both are part of environmental education and they both contribute equally. Right. Then importance of environmental education in India, if you want to focus so in particularly in India, Ministry of Environment and Forest launched environmental education awareness and training scheme long back in 1983-84. And what was the purpose? The purpose was to enhance people's understanding regarding what? human environment relationship so if people don't understand this delicate relationship they will be ruthless towards environment they will not understand the need to conserve right and to enhance skills and capacities to protect environment and improve it is the major thrust here right so this was long back started by the ministry of environment and forest so this step gives importance to promotion of non-formal or informal education as well and creating environmental awareness among all the people through various symposiums, seminars, workshops, right, training programs, national green corps and eco clubs creation. You must have seen eco clubs around your society, maybe in your school or at college levels, right? So that is what is part of this awareness program that we say, right? Environmental education is been given through all these institutions as well, right? Then we have National Museum of Natural History in New Delhi that set up in 1978. And remember, it also promotes non-formal education in various aspects of environment through exhibitions, through educational programs, through various activities for children and people in general. So that is how this importance of environmental education in India can be just seen through these important steps. Let's understand importance of environmental education just in few points as a summary. So environmental education, what do we learn overall? How to handle environmental issues or we can say challenges of environment. So what are the present challenges that we are facing? Mainly of climate change and associated allied activities, which is extreme events, flooding, right? Then we have cyclones, all these are environmental hazard and we have remedial measures in place, right, that we need to focus. Then comes about food security, which is part of environment as well, right. So we talk about food security, environmental protection, you know, drought and flood situation in India. So all those things become really important. Then it also tells us how to lead a better life. So it means in Human Development Index, that is HDI, we know the quality of life. So second important point is here is quality of life with less pollution, right? Then to prevent ecological crisis. Remember, we are already in the age of sixth mass extinction. Many times we keep hearing the news that a particular species got extinct or a particular species is falling into this endangered category. So remember, ecological crisis is one thing that needs to be prevented. Right. Gene pools need to be secured. So how to ensure socioeconomic development and make this earth a better place? So not just flora and fauna, but at the same time, the social and economic sectors of development needs to come together to make the earth a better place and live in present and also make it good, livable for future generations to come, which is the main goal of sustainable development that we already know about it. Right. So now, when we have learned in details about environmental education, in the sessions to come, we'll be looking into environmental policies and legislations. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned, stay safe, all the best wishes.